One of my favorite ways to level up my leatherwork is by making custom 3D printed stamps to either emboss or deboss a design into leather. Now, every time I show this in one of my videos, I get a bunch of questions about how to do it. So today, I want to show you my whole process from start to finish. An emboss design is when it's raised above the surface of the material. And in the case of leather, you do this by pushing all the negative space below the surface. And debossing is just the opposite. It's pushing the design itself below the surface. When you're working with 3D printed stamps, whether you're doing an embossed or debossed stamps kind of changes your process. So I want to show you an example of both. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to start with a sketch on the XY plane and just create some text. And let's just type out emboss. This will be the embossing example. Going to find a font that I like. The cool thing about making embossing stamps is you can choose relatively complicated designs that have really skinny elements. So I'm going to choose a font that's a little more on the complicated side. Maybe something with some serifs. And I'll increase the text height to half an inch. All right, so I'll hit OK on that. And then I think we want to add some simple border to this design. So I'm just going to create a rectangle. And we'll add a fillet to the edges. And we have to offset this outward so that it has some thickness. I have my calipers right beside me, and that's going to help me decide how thick to make this line. And looking at my calipers, I think that 0.05 inches should be a good width. So I'll hit enter. I want to add a bit more visual interest to them, so let's split the line in the middle. Turn this to a construction line. I'll just offset that on both sides. So now I have a cutoff in the middle. And there is our simple embossing design. Everything I'm selecting right now is going to be raised above the surface of the leather. So we need to add one more outside border to define the edge of the stamp. So I'm going to create one more offset to define the outer edge of the stamp. And I'll keep it at 0.1 so there's nice even spacing. So now we have our simple design and we want to start bringing things into 3D. Before we do that, I'm going to quickly explode the text so it's a little easier to deal with in Fusion. So I'll select the text, right click, and then click Explode Text. And now I have a nice set of lines rather than those text elements. I'm going to select all the negative space. I'm holding down Shift so I can select multiple things. And these are the parts that I want to pull into 3D. So I'll right click, Extrude. And now the classic question, how much relief do we want to put into our stamp? I found that 0.07 inches of relief works really well for embossing leather without using too much 3D printing filament. So we'll extrude the negative space by that amount and then hit OK. So there we go. We have our basic stamp, but it's currently hollow all the way through the design. So we need to add a backing plate. So I'll go ahead and create a new sketch on this top face. And I'm going to hit P for project and select just the outer perimeter. Now I want to select everything inside of the stamp and extrude this to create the backing plate. And I'll just do the same distance as the relief, which is 0.07 inches. And I made sure that join is selected. We don't have to worry about those lines. Those are just a rendering issue within Fusion. And there we go. I have my finished stamp. And since I extruded the backing plate on the top face, I don't have to worry about reversing it, which is something you always want to keep in mind when you're making a stamp. So at this point, I like to bring the stamp into my slicer to see how it will look like once it's 3D printed. So I'll go to File, 3D Print, select my stamp, and I'm going to bring it into Prusa Slicer. So the first thing we have to do is put the stamp on the face of the backing plate. We see that it's reversed correctly. 
and I'm going to change my infill to 100%. This stamp is going to be under a lot of pressure, so it's really important that it's solid all the way through. I'm just printing it in generic PLA, and I'll go ahead and slice it to see what it looks like. So if I zoom in on the stamp, I can see that all of the detail is captured. The one thing I can see is that the outer perimeter of the stamp looks a little close to that border, so I think I'm going to increase that distance between the two. So I'll enter the press pull command by pressing Q and then select all of the outer faces. And I just want to bring these outwards, I think by about 0.05 inches. That way the stamp will be a little stronger around the border. There we go. So my embossing stamp is done and now I want to switch gears to my debossing stamp. So let's just say that this is the text that I want to use for my debossing stamp. It's a little bit smaller and the font has skinnier elements than the embossing stamp. So I'm just going to extrude one of the letters and then bring it into my slicer to see what it looks like. So here's the letter really small on my build plate. I'll click slice now and you can see that the letter is so skinny that the nozzle of my 3D printer can't actually print it. The nozzle itself is extruding filament that's wider than the elements of the letter. And this is the thing you have to be careful about when you're making debossing stamps. When we're making an embossing stamps, we can make this negative space really skinny, since the printer is only extruding filament to go around that space. But when we're doing any debossing stamps, the size of our elements is limited by the extruder. So now I know that this stamp has to be a little bit bigger and we can go back in to our original sketch. I'm just hitting undo and we can make this bigger. So I'll go right click, edit text, and we'll change the text height to the same as before, 0.5 inches. And before I go any further, I wanna do one last test. So I'll explode the text, extrude the E. I'm gonna bring it into the slicer and now we can see that when we print it, I have two perimeters all the way around, and that should be fine for this stamp. So I'm all set to go forward. And just like before, I'm going to make a quick border to make my stamp a little more interesting. So we'll explode the text just like before. And now we want to select all of the elements that we're going to press into the leather. I'm going to use the same amount of relief as the embossing stamp, which is 0.07 inches. Hit OK. And now the last thing we have to do is make our backing plate. And in this case, we can make our backing plate go right up to the edge of the stamp itself. So I'll project the edge, add an extra line, and then make one more extrusion the same as the relief distance, 0.07 inches. Make sure that join is selected. And now if I go to the bottom, again, we have those weird little rendering errors, but we don't have to worry about them. I can see that my stamp is mirrored correctly. I've gone ahead and brought both stamps into one slicer file. Everything looks good, so I've set the infill to 100%, and now I can just export the G code and get to 3D printing. The stamps look super clean right off the printer, but the top face does have a bit of that 3D printed surface texture, and if we don't sand it down, it will get transferred to the leather. So I'm just going to give the top face of each of these stamps a quick sanding with 220 grit. It only takes about 30 seconds of sanding to cut down on the texture enough that it won't be noticeably transferred to the leather. If you have a Prusa, this is a great opportunity to use the ironing feature, and in that case, you probably won't have to do any sanding. But not everyone has a Prusa, so I wanted to show this in the more accessible way. I also like to use my ice pick to get rid of any little strings or other 3D printing artifacts that could impact 
the clarity of the stamping. This is a piece of eight ounce veg tan leather and to accept the impression, we have to soak it with water. So I'm just gonna do that with a spray bottle and we wanna get it really thoroughly soaked. When you soak veg tan leather with water, it turns into a plastic material and then you can stamp it, emboss it, and tool it and those impressions will stay permanently. So we're gonna really thoroughly wet it and while that water is soaking in, I like to always mark the upside of my stamps so that I don't get confused when I stamp and accidentally make something upside down. So this is up on this one. I know because the opening is on the bottom and then on my other stamp, opening is on the bottom. So this is the upside. I've also prepared a piece of scrap wood that fits over my stamp and I'll use that to evenly distribute the clamping pressure over the entire area. I gave the water about a minute to soak in and now the leather is nice and pliable. So I think it's ready to stamp. I'm gonna start with the embossing stamp. So I'll set that up on the leather right where I want it and place my piece of scrap wood over top. I'm just going to use two F clamps to apply the pressure and for a stamp of this size, I think that will be enough. So I'm gonna make sure they're set up evenly across the width of the stamp. And when you're doing an embossing, you wanna apply a lot of pressure. So I'm basically gonna crank these clamps to as much pressure as I can apply to the leather, essentially until they won't turn anymore. I'm gonna leave this clamped up for about three minutes. And for a stamp this small, that's all the time it takes to get a nice deep impression. But for bigger stamps, like the one that I showed at the beginning of this video, you need to leave it clamped up a lot longer and with more clamps or a book press to evenly distribute the pressure. It's been about four minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the clamps. And there we go. Beautiful impression. Now, since the leather is still in a plastic state, we wanna be really careful that we don't bend it too much because that could mess up the design. Now I'm gonna set up the debossing test right above and clamp it in place the same way as before. You don't have to apply quite as much pressure for debossing since the contact area is smaller. In fact, since this stamp has such thin edges, you wanna be careful that you don't apply too much pressure because it might even cut through the leather or thin it out so much that it becomes weakened. You also don't have to leave it clamped up for quite as long. I think about a minute should do. So there you have it, an embossing and a debossing. As I mentioned, this is one of my favorite ways to customize leather, and there are really infinite possibilities with these 3D printed stamps. I hope you learned something from this video, and let me know if there are any other Fusion tutorials that you're interested in seeing. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.